What's going on, guys? Welcome to uh, today's podcast. Josh is joining me here to do a um, start sit version. We're going to answer the remaining start sits that I didn't or couldn't get to uh, yesterday. So, um, yeah, let's just you want to just dive straight into it. I'll start spouting out questions, and we'll yeah, let's we'll, get to it. Okay. Um, so my guy Mike Gabba, a longtime follower of Fair Shake Football, so I do appreciate you. He says, and imagine this: Calvin Ridley's in a start sit question now. And the other guy in this equation is Jalen Waddle, so it's uh, his question: Jalen Waddle or Calvin Ridley? Calvin Obviously, Ridley. we're going Calvin Ridley. Yeah. But I think I just the reason I wanted to stress that is because you guys were so adamant that I was low on Ridley when in fact I was probably still high on him at least so far. But I don't even remember where I. I had mean, him. you have to be almost. He's been out for personal reasons. Just one week though. But, yeah, but and they also had their bias. And then they had the buy coming off buy against Miami. They're getting it's just gonna be a slaughterhouse. Yeah, he he. However, uh, on the year he's averaging just nine yards per catch. Right, like but you can never. It's like one of those guys. Obviously, you probably draft him in the second or third round. So it's like, yeah, absolutely. and if you're banking on anything, he you know the. The worst game he had last year was probably 15 points, it seems like. The yeah, guy, he, he went so nuts. Consistent. Yeah. The presence of Julio really helped him a lot. You know, similar right. to what I, I said before the year about Antonio Brown and Juju. It's, it was a very similar dynamic there. But I definitely think we'll see much, much better days with uh, Calvin, and I absolutely think he's a must-start this week against Miami. So Absolutely. Yeah, we're definitely, we're definitely starting. And then uh, start of the week, I'm just going to throw it out there. I like this too. Matt Ryan. I like it. Yeah, I talked about Matt Ryan's recent success in um in this morning's uh preview podcast and I really do think that he's a good start. When he said that to me today when I got here, I was like, "You know what? You're right. That's a that is a good start because yeah, the Dolphins good. have been getting abused through the air. I mean, yes. they made Trevor Lawrence look good, and that has not been easy to do." <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, he's obviously been terrible, but uh with Justin Herbert and Josh Allen on by this week. If you need a fill in, go get your boy Matt, Matt Ryan. So that's good advice, in my opinion. Yes. Okay. So then, this isn't a start sip, but we got a guy that says this man's offered me Chase Claypool for me to give up Michael Thomas and a fourth. Oh, he's laughing. Okay, that wasn't a real question, but I guess maybe somebody was thinking they could pull the wool over his eyes. But we both know that ain't happening. And sometimes it, you know, You're right. Well, that, it I mean, will it might, will happen. Well, not not, to, not with us. Yeah, obviously. not to the Fair Shake Football crew. Um, okay, Le'Veon Bell, J.D. McKissick, or Miles Gaskin. I know my answer. I'm curious what you think. I would say I'll just go out to go ahead and I'll, say mine first. McKissick. Yeah, I was yeah. gonna say the same thing, dude. Gaskin. We said two weeks ago we can't trust him. Then he scores thirty. Then we say okay, fine. He's got a good matchup. Then he scores basically nothing. Now. We've seen the nothing part happen in two of three weeks. So I, I think that we have to lean more towards we can't trust him. So I, I'm with you. I think McKissick is the answer there. Yeah. Um, you never know, obviously, at this point with Miles Gaskin. So if I'm – like, I have him in one league, and he's riding the bench this yeah, week. Yeah, I liked him, too. I thought before the season, I thought he was a pretty good value in, like, the fifth round or whatever mm-hmm. wherever his ADP was. I thought it was okay. But because last year he played 60% or more of the snaps in every game for them. Right. And, and was clearly the guy whenever he was – even when he, like, went on the COVID list and then he came back after Salvin Ahmed had that big game, he was immediately utilized as the number one back. I don't know what they're doing in Miami. I personally am starting to think we jumped the gun calling Brian Flores this awesome coach. Like, I mean, this – just a lot of things that are going on there in Miami don't feel like I don't know. They just don't feel right. They don't feel like a team that that is together. In, no, in my opinion, not by any means. And that's where where I judge the coaching staff most. So. It's it's gonna be a slaughterhouse. Yeah, I think the uh, the Falcons are gonna. And if Falcons win this game, they will have won, I believe, three of four. So that's uh, quietly having some success there in Atlanta. Okay, here's your boy Rondell Moore. He's in this next question. Rondell Moore, Bateman, or Amon Ra St. Brown? Amon Ra's been going off. I started him last week in the league because I had receivers on by, and he went off for like 10. I'm going Rondell. Rondell. <clears throat> Man, I said this before uh, the other day. Rondell Moore is approaching droppable for me. He's had one good game in his last like Right, but he's also, he's also that guy 
that can catch a 75 yard touchdown pass. Yeah. And that happens like, I don't know, once every three games. Eight games so he's so. due. <laughs> no, no, it's not because it, it, he did that in week two. This is week seven. And they haven't had a bye week, so I don't know. But anyways, Rondell Moore, Bateman, or Amon Ra St. Brown. I'm going to say, believe it or not, I'm going to say Amon Ra. I want to say Bateman, but I'm going to say Amon Ra St. Brown. And the reason for that is because I think it's going to be such a slaughtering with Detroit and uh, getting just completely beat down by the Rams that I Mm -hmm. think game flow is going to be on his side. I don't think that Jalen Ramsey is going to be following this rookie around, you know, and – I just think volume will be there. I, I, that's why I'm starting DeAndre Swift with confidence, even though I think they're going to get completely smoked. Um, you know, I didn't even think about this on the pod earlier when I said that it was a Stafford revenge game. It's also maybe a Jared Goff revenge game, right? I mean, if Jared Goff goes in there and beats the Rams when they're riding this 5 and one heater, I will literally cry of laughter. Yeah, uh, I'll <laughs> lose it, honestly. <laughs> Dude, I mean, imagine McVay, like, Goff hangs 505 touchdowns on him. And, and yeah, Stafford does, and like, knowing the know, NFL, it's that's, possible. That's literally not that – it's not that uh, – if, yeah. if they can put a stop to um, – Basically anything that they're doing. <laughs> I mean, offensively, defensively, if they could just right, if they could just play shut well. down at least one of them. You know, Matt Stafford comes in, has a bad game, kind yeah. of thing. Uh, Aaron Donald can't get after the quarterback. I mean, basically, if, if pigs fly, then the yes, Lions win the game. Hundred percent, it's that simple. So, um, okay, start two for flex: Miles Sanders, Damian Harris, Darnell Mooney. I'm sorry. I hope you didn't start OBJ. I definitely would not have recommended that, especially with all these other options. Or Brandon Ayuk. Ugh. So we're saying two. So let's just eliminate Ayuk and OBJ because OBJ has already played. Ayuk, we can't trust him right now. 100%. Now we've got Miles Sanders, Damian Harris, or Darnell Mooney. I'm going Damian Harris for sure. Mm-hmm. And I would, I would go Mooney. I, I agree. Yeah. Because Miles Sanders is an awesome player, but we we don't know if he's even going to see 10 touches, you know, and that's just a damn shame there in Philly. Um, and Darnell Mooney's playing Tampa Bay, and mm-hmm. I think that Tampa's probably going to slaughter them. So I like Mooney for a similar reason that I like Amon Ross St. Brown, uh, as long as he doesn't draw Jamel Dean in coverage. Yeah, My I mean, God, last Jamel week. Jamel Dean has been going crazy lately. Last week he matched his season high of eight targets, five receptions, 45 yards, one touchdown, first touchdown of the season. <clears throat> So, I mean, I loved him. I, I called him one of the best, my favorite sleepers, you know, 10th round guys or later, uh, all off season long. And, and he's, he's performing. Yeah, he is. He is. Okay. Uh, so we agree on that. Damian Harris and Mooney, um, Robbie Anderson or Latavius Murray. Well, I don't think Latavius Murray is playing, is he? I think he's questionable, but I think if he's playing, I mean, I guess. He, yeah. I mean, if I he's know, playing, man. You're definitely going. <clears throat> Here's the thing, Latavius Murray. Here's I would the thing. say I agree with you, but but I will say this: Robbie Anderson has to play better. Like, there's no way he finishes the year like this. I mean, he had 11 targets for 11 yards last week. I, I mean, don't, I don't even think it was 11 yards, was it? I think it was yes, like it, was. it was. It was bad. It was Very awful. Bad. I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> um, like, maybe I could have done that. Right. Hundred <laughs> percent. No, uh, but anyways, yeah, so I think it's Murray, but, like, I it wouldn't surprise me if Robbie Anderson outscored him and had a breakout okay, so game. Okay, so right here, breaking news as of an hour ago. Latavius Murray did not practice Friday and is likely out okay, then from week seven. Yeah, then just, if you have to start Robbie, then start Robbie. If you want, Kyle, let me know who else you have on, even if someone's available on waivers and we can see if... Uh, you know, we can see if maybe we have a better option for you, but I yeah, I mean, there's always there has to be a better <coughs> yeah. option at this point. Robbie Anderson's floor is a basically a donut. I would take Ayuk over, over Robbie, Robbie Anderson at this point. I don't hate that. And if he's out there, I mean, I mean, just throw him in if you have to. Like, yeah, I mean, desperation play maybe. I don't but think Robbie Ayuk's Anderson out there in many is leagues, a though. desperation play at this point. That's very true. Yes. I can't. I thought he was going to be a great value in the six. What was he going sixth, seventh round, eighth round? Mm-hmm. I thought he would be a great value. He has not been. No. Okay, Bateman, uh, Rondo Moore, or Khalil Herbert, my guy. So according to reports, Herbert is going to continue getting a lot. Uh, maybe not a lot, but he's definitely going to keep getting. 
snaps and increasing snaps. So, so they're going to play him over Damian Williams, is what you're saying? Possibly. Um, but oh, you mean while Montgomery's out? Like it'll be, right. It'll be those two. Gotcha. Yes. Okay. Because, like I said, the last two weeks, he proved it to himself and the team that he is a viable option when it comes to the run game. So I like I like Herbert in that s- They're starts playing it. the Bucks. I know that. That run defense is nasty. Yeah, it's tough. They're not going to be able Rita to do Vea anything. Vitavea is not Here's small. Here's the biggest. This to me, <laughs> he's not a small man. Uh, that sick-ass play where he just threw the double team aside and yes. then just swallowed just hugged Miles him. Sanders <laughs> was amazing. I got you, bro. And I then love you, that guy. They, like, zoomed on it, <clears throat> and Miles Sanders is like, <laughs> I'm going down. Yeah. He, the, <laughs> the whole, at first it was like, oh, well, there's a hole there. And yeah. then it was like. This big 350-pound monster just steps right in and says no. I wonder wonder what he said to him. Like, not today. Yeah, just go down, little man. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. um, So, in this one, I like Rondo. I mean, I'm sorry. I like Rashad Bateman. I like Rashad Bateman for sure. I I think that Rondo Moore is not trustworthy. Bateman saw six targets in his first game. I feel like Bateman is a good DFS play this week. Yeah, I like that. I like yeah. that for sure. And also, the thing about Bateman is the Bengals' run defense, they're allowing fewer than four yards a carry. So um, the Ravens might have to pass the football a little bit. And they've oh, shown you know they will. that they are more than willing to. So I, I think that Bateman is a, a decent start in this one. And I, I do like him, like you said, in DFS as well. M-M-O-L-G-A-A-R-D. I, I love you. I don't know how to say your, your at, but, you know, I love you. Um, he's one of my first, like, few hundred followers i think he's been awesome okay sony michelle kind of desperate on the on the league wide by well i don't know who your options are you're just asking sony and yeah i think if there was a week sony was going to perform well if they just completely blow detroit to smithereens and sony could definitely be um i think sony like last week i think he had nine carries and that was it that was because they beat the shit out of the giants so yeah i think he could be in for something similar so depending on your options yeah start yeah he's definitely a flex play this week <clears throat> yeah i mean i wouldn't say def i would say if you have to yeah right but i mean as we know in fantasy running backs are scarce yeah. when it comes to waiver wire situations and bye weeks mm-hmm. so it's like yeah he's a good he's a good little spot start obviously he's you know second in the pecking order but and they have Daryl Henderson, who's getting ninety percent of the sap snaps, yeah. it seems. But um, he really is in most cases. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. If if like I said, if, if it's all you got, I mean, you yeah. can ride him. Yeah. Right. He's also sneaky <clears throat> daily play this week. Yeah. If you just want to get somebody, yeah, that's fine. I'm, I'm because the I mean, chances of him getting fifty yards rushing and a touchdown, I think, are relatively high for a number for a clear number two running back. I think that right. because of the game flow likely to happen and all that kind of and stuff. And if Daryl Henderson is just running it down their throat and gets to the goal line, comes out gassed, you know? Yeah. I mean and you Sony's got Sony Michelle in yeah. there at like fresh a, legs, big Should have a Sony. one, two, maybe three yard touchdown plunge, you know? Yeah. And fifty yards, like you said. And, you know, that's viable amount of points for a flex play. Yeah. Okay. Damian Harris, Chuba, or DeAndre Swift pick two and not PPR. Because say Damian Harris, Chuba, or Swift. It's, I know my Chuba choices. and Swift. Yeah. I don't give a damn if it's not PPR. Uh, DeAndre Swift's going to have 100 yards from scrimmage. And so even if it's not PPR, he'll likely get their only touchdown or <laughs> maybe, a, you know, one or two. I hope the Lions go out and compete just for the record. I, if you're a Lions fan, I don't mean that disrespectfully. I just. I just feel like McVeigh and Stafford are going to just be coming for blood. Um, yeah. 100%. And I don't really see Jared Goff as a guy that's, like, going to be that upset. You know, like, gonna, he's just going to be like, yeah, sure. I'll just go. I mean, I make $33 million a year. I don't know, whatever. Just yeah. go out there and play he's ball. Like, like, he's going to not really care. Maybe I'm wrong. I do think he's very competitive. I just think that, um, I don't know. I, I think that they're sub- also severely outmanned from a personnel standpoint. But, right. yeah. They're basically the little giants. Right. <laughs> right. Uh, Damian Harris, I agree. Damian Harris and DeAndre Swift because Chuba, to me, has a bit of a tough matchup um, in a Giants defense that I know hasn't been good against the run this year, but I do think they're much more talented than than what they've shown. I think. Yeah, I mean, I, I was also reading that Chuba is going to be more involved as a pass catcher out of the backfield this week, or that he, yeah. he should at least, because he's a good runner, you know? Yeah. That Panthers offense, I know they scored a decent amount of points last year, but, I mean, last week, but they didn't, it was not all because of their offense. It was a lot of, like, the 
they had the block punt touchdown. They had the mm-hmm. fumble recovery taken all the way down to, you know, the red zone or whatever. So, yeah, I mean, I, and Sam Darnold, again, four touchdowns, six picks in his last three. I, I don't know if I want to be – I don't want a bunch of shares in that offense if I can avoid it. All right, Sanders or Damian Harris. Now, I don't know if he's saying Miles or Emmanuel, but let's run through them both. If he's saying Emmanuel Sanders or Damian Harris, what's your answer? You know what? Damian Harris. You know what? Emmanuel Sanders is on bye week, so he's talking Miles Sanders. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, um, yeah, Miles Sanders or Damian Harris, half PPR. Damn. That's close. They're... I'm going Damian Harris. Yeah, I'm going Damian Harris, too. I think that it's just a, a better matchup and a more secure workload right now. Miles is is really frustrating me, a guy I really liked. He's not frustrating me. The coach over there is frustrating me. I definitely think, and as I'm saying this, hear me out on this, I still think he's a good buy low. And the reason I think that is because when the cold weather turns, he's going to be a guy that I think is, is definitely, his workload is going to shoot up the charts. He's going to be carrying the ball I think over the last five or six games, at least 15 times a game. So if you can get him right now for super cheap, I really think you should do it, especially if you need like a, that solid, like reliable third running back. Yeah. I think he's a damn good one to have. And that's why I mean, I'm keeping a, him right now. I have him, I took in our league, I went running back, running back, running back, running back. Miles Sanders has been on my bench all year. I'm just going to patient. I'm not going to sell him for what? Like, I, I, I have plenty of receivers. Luckily, I drafted Debo in the seventh. I got T. Higgins. I got uh, I have plenty of receivers there. I only need to play two every week. So um, I'm just going to wait until he's valuable, and then we'll see injuries happen. One of my top three guys could he's I mean, Antonio Gibson. Maybe he goes out for the final five games. Miles Sanders will be ready to take over. That's why I go best value available. Eventually, we'll figure out what to do with him. But, yeah, I like him. Um, anyway, but you like him over Damian Harris? No, no, no. Okay. This week I like Damian Harris. I'm just right. saying I still like Miles later, yeah, of course. like for the stretch run of this season in particular. Um, well, back to that note, they're obviously playing the Jets, cake yeah. matchup, giving up the second most points to the fans, uh, the run back position. I yeah. mean, that's yeah. And Damian, I think he had 100 yards and a touchdown or something like that. Yeah, he did last week or last time. All right, Devontae Booker or Carter? I, I'm, I'm assuming it's Michael Carter, right? Yes, and my answer to that would be Booker, Devontae Booker. Yeah, and the reason I, I the reason I think Booker is because the Panthers' run defense over the last three or four weeks has been, since that Cowboys game has just been gashed every week. You know, uh, they didn't get quite as badly gashed against the Eagles. It was a lot of Jalen Hurts, but still, they. Um, I mean, Dalvin last week I think had 140 on him by himself. Mm-hmm. So they've been not the greatest. So I think that the Giants are going to try and run the ball because the last thing you want to do is be in a position against that Panthers defense where you have to pass, you know what I mean? In, in third and longs, then they're going to, that pass rush is going to be pretty damn effective against the Giants offensive line. So I think that it'll be paramount for the Giants to establish the run. I think Devontae Booker will have some success doing so. I also like Carter, but against the Patriots, I, I just kind of see the Patriots bouncing back in a big way 100%. Uh, defensively this week. All right. Devontae Booker or Chase Edmonds? Devontae Booker. Yep. Yeah, right. He's just he's a viable start this week. I don't give a shit. Although Chase Edmonds against the Texans, that, that definitely. Right, but I'm, I'm pretty sure encouraging. <laughs> Chase but, Edmonds is aching with an injury right now, so it's like. Yeah, I think I, I think you're right. I think Devontae Booker's a, the Yeah, I mean, the, he's, right the volume is there, especially. If Saquon's out, I mean. Yeah, he is. Okay. He's their bell cow. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, okay, DeAndre Swift, Jonathan Taylor, Joe Mixon. Okay, How many? so we're picking one. Henry is his RB1, by the way, so you are in very good shape, and you're definitely, most definitely, definitely starting Jonathan Taylor. Right. Yeah. yeah. He's averaging 140 yards from scrimmage over the last three games. Yeah, so you're, he's just, yeah. <laughs> you're starting. He just, uh, he is, to me, the a The fact that you have three, all those people, it's, it must be a very... You drafted well. <laughs> right. I mean, it has to be a, a smaller league, right. too, but just because the, I don't see how he would have landed all those guys. But, but yeah, man, I would go Jonathan Taylor for sure. Yep. Yeah. 100%. Okay. Chubby. What? Uh, Chubby, Daryl Williams, AB, happy PR flex. I think well, he AB's Chuba, out. I think he means Chuba Hubbard, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, AB's out? Yeah. I didn't know that. Breaking news. Wow. When did it break? Um, it broke 20 minutes ago. Wow. I don't know how it Bruce Arian said Antonio Brown is out for week seven 
Gronk is out for week seven, and Levante oh. David is out. I saw that tweet come seven. through, and I just didn't have a chance to look at it. I saw Gronk and ribs. That was all I saw. Okay, so then it's um, Chuba Hubbard, Daryl Williams. That's that's our options, half PPR. I'm going Daryl. Yeah, so am I. Yeah, I think um, against the Titans, I, I like, I like everything about that. I, I feel like that's um, – Yeah, he's, I mean, all, getting a 1,000% of the snaps. Yeah, so. yeah. I mean, he got 20 carries last week. I don't know when was Clyde. When did Clyde even get 20 carries? And the reason he does that is because he got the goal line carries. He mm-hmm. got his normal role plus Clyde's. Ideal role for any handcuff right there, as we, we saw last week from him. Okay, just gave Cup, Miles Sanders, and Damian Harris for Dalvin and handcuff. Okay, he gave Cup, Miles Sanders, and Damian Harris for Dalvin and handcuff. I'm assuming he means Madison. Madison. Yeah. Did he overspend? That's his yes. question. Yeah. I yeah. think so too, bro. Cooper Cup. Now, yeah. If Dalvin stays healthy all year, you're gonna profit, maybe from that trade. But you still overspent like crazy. Because yeah, I mean, at this point, Cooper Cup is averaging what twenty. He's like the wide receiver three or something on the year. Yeah, but he's. You know what I mean. So you, you can't give away the wide receiver three and and your Damian Harris and Miles Sanders. Right, and it seems guy. like you're banking on Dalvin Cook being healthy. Well, he's also got Madison, but still Madison, even though. Madison, in the two games Dalvin has missed, has basically been Dalvin. Yes, 100%. But you still, Dalvin is Dalvin, and, and you're only going to play one of those guys at a time. So even if you get a healthy Dalvin all year and he's elite and he goes 29 for 140 like he did last week, I, I still think you give up a little too much. Now, it may not be devastating or crippling to your team, right? depending on you know just like what else your roster has. But, yeah, I think you did overspend. Okay, Higgins or Mooney? Man, that's interesting because Higgins is going to have his – I think Higgins is going to see – oh, no. Higgins is not going to see Marlon Humphrey because we're going to start viewing Jamar Chase as the, as the wide receiver one. So um, I still kind of think Mooney, man. Yeah, I, I, like, think, I like Mooney in this one. I think Justin Fields is going to have to throw the ball. This is going to be the moment of – not the moment of truth in yeah, finding his good, entire career, but it's going to be a nice – like we're gonna, he's gonna have to throw forty times in this game. Yeah, it's definitely a good spot start for the weekend. Obviously, another daily play fields. No, well, him and Mooney. Yeah, I love Mooney this week for sure. Um, yeah, I think Mooney. I, I, I think Mooney too. But I, I want to say Higgins. I just really like everything surrounding Mooney's situation right now. Mm-hmm. And so um, I think Jamel Dean will cover Allen Robinson. That means Mooney will abuse whoever covers him. Okay. Devontae Booker, or I think he just said D. Johnson. I, I'm assuming that was D. Ernest, so let's just uh, unfortunately skip that. I tried to answer the Thursday ones, guys. I answered like 30 of these that we're not even covering and here. They just kept coming. Yeah, which I love, and I'm happy you guys give us this because we can – this is more content for everyone to see because even if somebody's watching this and they didn't ask a question, this may help them answer their question. So, of course. Okay. That's why we're here. Uh, Goder or Gasicki this week and moving forward in PPR? Goddard. Gasicki. I like Gasicki more. Well, with <clears throat> Zach Ertz out of town now, it's all Goddard. Yeah. All Goddard all day. So. I just think Mike Gasicki is a much better player, and I know that's going to be – Right, yeah. but it also comes down – Yes, Tua did play well last week, but is he going to play like that every game this no, year? he's not. Exactly. <laughs> but so, I think that... And, but then again... Gasicki is right in his wheelhouse of throws he can make. Right. You know? So, I mean, um, the tight end's always that safety net. Exactly. Yeah. And that's what Tua needs. That just lines up with his skill set. Plus, they don't have much at receiver, so it, it you know... Yeah, I think, I think um, that's a good spot. Devontae Parker is out this week, so... Yeah, it's not looking good there in Miami. Okay, rank these in PPR. Godwin, Pittman... Dearness Johnson, I'm going to assume he means rest of season because that's all I can give you this at this point. Anyways, um, since Dearness has already played, I mean, uh, Godwin, Pittman, Dearness Johnson, Shepard, Miles Sanders, Booker. Now, he, he probably meant for this week. Okay, we're just, we're just going to disregard Dearness from this. And Godwin, Pittman, Shepard, Miles Sanders. Well, I'm going Booker. Godwin over Pittman. I agree. I mean, Pittman has a tough matchup. He does. Francisco. Yes, especially on the road. Mm-hmm. That's so, going to be a, a Sunday night. I mean, that's going to be a good game. So I'll say Godwin, Booker, Pittman, Pittman, Sanders. Yeah, yeah, I agree. All right. Uh, I would almost maybe put Pittman second, but 
Yeah, that's, that's it's, a, yeah, it's close. I, he's definitely a guy that, like in best ball, I would love to have Michael Pittman right. in, play on my team this week in particular. And any week. All right, rank these running backs in PPR. Daryl Williams, Devontae Booker, Miles Johnson. I'm sorry, Miles Sanders, Dearness Johnson. Um, So, obviously, Dearness already played. So, let's say it's the same guy, by the way. Let's say Daryl Williams, Devontae Booker, Miles Sanders. That's how I'd rank them. Daryl, Devontae, Miles. Agreed. Okay. I'm offering D-Hop and Allen Robinson for James Robinson and Sutton. PPR, I want... I want running back and good at wide receiver. Thoughts? Um, okay. So you're offering D-Hop and A-Rob for J-Rob and Sutton. I like it. I kind of like it, too. Yeah. He wants – okay, so he wants – He wants to shore up the running back position. Yeah, I totally – yeah, I like that, man. I like it. Because I think what we're seeing in Arizona is good if you're a – And they're on by this week. So after this week, he has Robinson for the rest of the year. James? Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, and I think that – the good news for the Cardinals fans is your offense is much more balanced and that they're throwing to everybody. Mm-hmm. Bad news for DeAndre Hopkins owners is the Cardinals' offense is much more balanced. You know, and so they he's just not, got another He's not just being force-fed like he was birds. last year. Yeah, and so. they just got another one. You're right. Okay, so rank these wide receivers PPR. It's the same guy, too. I love you, bro. Thank you for asking all these questions. So rank these receivers PPR for week seven. D-Hop, DJ Moore, Chris Godman, A-Rob, Higgins, Waddle, Sutton. So Sutton's already played, so we got to disregard him. Um. Hmm. Well, Godwin at the for top for week seven. For week seven specifically, you like Godwin at the top? Yes. Wow. I think I like D Hop at the top and then Godwin. Yeah, D Hop revenge game too against this is Houston true. too. Yeah, I like D Hop at the top. Um, DJ Moore is going to draw James Bradbury. That's going to be a what tough a, day. Yeah, at the and it also depends on Sam how Darnold. good Sam Darnold plays. So, yeah. so D Hop, Godwin. I'm going to be lower on A Rob this week because I think Jamel Dean's going to lock him up. To be, to be honest, I, did you see my post yesterday? Jamel Dean's allowing like a 33 per, or whatever it was in the 30 percent completion percentage this year. With uh, he had in the last two games alone, when targeted teams have gone two of 11 for 11 yards and two interceptions with six passes defended. He's been completely shut suffocating. down. Yeah. yeah. So for that reason, I'm gonna put A Rob second to um, I'm gonna put A Rob last in this to be honest. So let's work it backwards. A Rob's last. Higgins, DJ Moore, Waddle, Godwin, D Hop. That's how I'd go. <laughs> in reverse, yeah. baby. All right. That's a good <clears throat> You like that? <clears throat> yeah. Good list. Okay. Good rankings. Rank these receivers this week. D Hop. Oh, same question. All right. Never mind. Um, okay, Jamar Chase or DJ Moore? Wow, both have very tough matchups this week. Jamar Chase. <sighs> he's gonna. I'm telling you, he's gonna you get think loose. Jamar Chase is gonna beat up on. He's Marlon a bangle, Humphrey. dude. He's gonna get loose. No, check this out, like a tiger. <laughs> Jamar Chase versus Marlon Humphrey. DJ Moore versus James Bradbury. On paper, it sounds horrible, but well, they're it's both very difficult matchups, right? I don't think either one of these guys is going to do a lot. So, you know, I, I don't think you can bench him right now, but I don't think. Right, but Jamar do has that, that. Eye of the tiger? Yes. It's literally the, the eye of the bangle <laughs> at this point. Okay. Okay, yeah. Let's just go with Jamar. Because yeah. I'd I like him. He's a Burrow. must start at this point. I trust Burrow more than Sam Darnold. And for that reason, I'm going to say Jamar Chase. Yep. Plus, I think Joe Judge is going to have his team ready to play this week because if he doesn't and they go lay another egg and, or they don't look. You know, like they're competing at least on defense. Mm-hmm. Um, he might get fired. Like, it, I, I wouldn't surprise me if he was just fired. You know, right out of the gate. So uh, after this week or some crazy thing like that, because the, the Maras are getting impatient over there. So yeah, yeah. I, I'm with you. Let's go chase uh, Landry or Mooney. Sorry, Landry's already played. I would have said Mooney though. Latavius, if he plays, which I don't think he is, is he? Likely out. Yeah, Freeman. If Murray's okay, so Freeman or Bateman? That's the question. Freeman. Yeah, I agree. I agree because, yeah, he is. I out. mean, I think it's a safer play. I'm assuming it gets your flex play if you're asking between those two. But I obviously, as Latavius Murray is out, it's going to be him and Le'Veon. And you probably won't see a lot of Le'Veon. Maybe you will. Maybe it's. I think you'll see some eight, nine carries. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I definitely like Devontae. 
And by the way, at Joe.Cardamone, he says, you never post mine, laughing my ass off. Well, you just missed your chance, bro, because I don't see a question from you, and we would have answered it here. Anyways, I, but you know I love you. Um, Hollywood, Patterson, or A.B.? You got to start Cordero. Right. Is that Cordero? And yeah, A.B.'s out, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, you're starting. But, man. Yeah, Holly, he's like you know the Hollywood number is like, four or number five running back right now. But you know Hollywood is like the number five receiver or something <laughs> in fantasy. It's crazy. Um, But I'm still saying Patterson. I, I just yeah, I mean, obviously, it's a, it's a, a, that's a close call. I mean, you could go either one. Yeah, I'm I'm just under no circumstances would I bench Patterson. Under many circumstances, cont- you know, depending on my roster, would I bench Hollywood despite what he's done this year and despite how good of a player he is. You know, I, I think he could go for, just to be clear, Hollywood yeah. could easily have 100 in the touchdowns. Yeah, he's week, top six right now. Hollywood? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Higgins, Mike Davis. All right, or Dearness, but obviously we didn't get there. Higgins or Mike Davis? Let's just answer it like that. I like Higgins. I agree. Although Mike Davis has been really yeah, but at this point, solid. Yeah, but know? Cordell Patterson is like basically taking over that backfield. It seems like yeah, so. But, but Mike Davis still is. Uh, he's still been like 10, 12, 14 fantasy points every week in PPR league. Right. I mean, that's good for so a flex been, play. Yeah. Okay, Devontae Booker. My oh yeah, we already answered that. We already answered that one. Um, AJ Green, Rondell Moore, or Van Jefferson this week. Well, definitely not Van Jefferson. No offense to him, but there's just so many weapons. Yeah, he's like fifth in the pecking order there. Yeah. I'm um, going to say A.J. Green for me, for sure, over Rondale. He yeah, he's mad because he spent all that fab on well, Rondale. <laughs> all that fab? It was like $30. 30 bucks. That's 30% of your wad, bro. Yeah, but it's fake money. <laughs> Still. Um, anyway, so yeah, I would go A.J. Green. Would you say A.J. Green or Rondell? Yeah, I mean, I like A.J. He's obviously surprised, in a sense, this Definitely year. Definitely surprised me. I did not think he was going to be fantasy relevant in the slightest bit. Right. I mean, he's but. probably averaging 10, 11 points a game at this point. So I think I mean, more than that, isn't he? Well, I mean, he said two games where it was 3.5 and, and 1.8, so that's going to bring down his average. Oh, yeah. But he's he had 11, 13, 15, and 16 were his best games. That's good. So, um, yeah, coming off be somewhere in that range this week, you know, coming off five receptions, 79, nine, 79 yards and a touchdown, touchdown yeah. um, against Houston at home. Uh, yeah, they're going to put on a f- massacre on this Yeah, team. they are. Uh, it's <coughs> not going to be pretty for the Texans this week, unfortunately, but then again, we don't like Houston. So, <laughs> okay. Mike Evans, Sterling Shepard and AB, but AB is out. So Evans or Sterling Shepard. I'm going Evans because he's just proven to be, well, I know he put up a dud last week as soon as we were on, but Slay was guarding him all last week. So I'm, I'm going to say Evans, man. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Okay, Miles Sanders, Chase Edmonds, DeAndre Swift, A-Rob, and Dearness Johnson, but of course we can't answer that. Um, Miles Sanders, Edmonds, Swift, A-Rob, does it start three? Oh. Well, Swift is number one on the list. Yeah, I'm going to, you said Edmonds is banged up. Yeah. How banged up we talking? <laughs> I'm going to say Miles Sanders, Swift, Edmonds. I can't start A-Rob. I just think it's no. going to be very tough against Jamel Dean, man. Okay, Zach Ertz and t- or Tyler Higby. I don't think I'm going start. Higby. Yeah, you can't I start mean, Ertz in his first game Ertz, in Arizona. Yeah, first, first game, learning new offense, new playbook. It's right. probably going to take him a couple weeks to get going. Yeah. Um, I'm starting him only because there's not much left out there, and I'm just, you know, obviously it's Zach Ertz, so it's like, yeah. I mean, you could throw a bunch of drags, and that's always your your th- you're like it's Zach Ertz, it's <laughs> right. Well, I mean, he's you know he's a he's a Philly legend, Super Bowl yeah. champ. So no, he's, it's like, he's he was a great tight end back in the day. It, he's still solid. You you act like he's old or something. Well, he is. He's like 32, isn't he? I don't think he's that. Look old. it up. Uh, Zach Ertz? Yeah. Um, in the meantime, we will move on to, I think we both He's agreed. 30. Okay. Born in 1990. So he's not old. He'll be 31 in two weeks. But yeah. Yeah, so he's not in his prime anymore. He's uh, slightly a step behind that. 
Okay, and one of my longtime followers, I love this guy, uh, Jack Hussey, I think it is. I think his name is Jack. It's Jay. Um, Devontae Smith, Darnell Mooney, or Brian Edwards at flex in a full PPR league? Devontae Smith. Hmm. Man, over Mooney? Yeah. That's the right play. That's the safe play, but damn it, I feel like Mooney's going to go off this week. Yeah, he's a good – I think he's a, a good daily start. Because I think he's good in any situation, but I, you're right. I don't think we can start him over Devonta Smith. You're definitely not starting Brian Edwards over either uh, no. either of these guys, though. So, no. and obviously Devonta Smith is coming right along. I mean, mm-hmm. he obviously had a bad game last mm-hmm. week. They were playing the Bucks, so yeah, he got the Jamel Dean treatment. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, wait for Alex Collins to hopefully play or start Corey Davis because Collins plays Monday night. Or just go ahead and start Corey Davis. I think you need to wait. Wait. Yeah. And um, Corey Davis is a desperation play at this point. Not because of his talent and his overall yeah, he's self-being. Got the, it's it's he, more his quarterback. And, and that he's whole playing the offense. Patriots, too. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be oh J.C. Jackson. And they have a history of slaughtering the Jets. Yeah. A history that dates back as recently as a few weeks ago. So. Right. <laughs> um, okay. Bell or Freeman if Murray sits? Freeman. I agree, but I like Bell. Keep him on your yes. rosters this week. At least watch him play and then pick up a kicker. Okay, um, Tim Patrick, Brandon Ayuk, or Khalil Herbert. I am Xing out Khalil Herbert from the possibility this week because he's playing the Bucks. I just won't. I'm not going to do that. Um, so for me, Tim Patrick's already played, so I guess we're going Ayuk. Ayuk it is. Okay, Waddle or Bateman? Waddle. Okay. Coming I, off last I week. Agree. I mean, I agree. you have to. He was targeted 13 times, caught like yeah. 11. Yeah, I agree. Uh, Michael Gibson, I'm sorry, Michael Carter or Antonio Gibson? Antonio Gibson? Absolutely. I think uh, he's just worried about his question? health. Yeah. Well, because he, he left last week or whatever. Um, so they're basically scared that he could, you know, play, get two play or three or snaps and, like, I can't go anymore. Yeah. Yeah, and then exactly. he's on the bench for the rest of the game and then you're fucked. Yep. Exactly. Devontae Parker, I don't think he's playing, is he? I don't think he's out. Let me see. So, or A.J. Green. I would say A.J. Green either way. So, I would, yeah. you know, let's move on there. Renfro or Mooney? Mooney. 100%. Yeah. Damian Harris or Devontae Booker? Damian Harris. Okay. I don't even know if I'm in this shot anymore. Um, what are we at here? Yeah, I'm, I say Dam- uh, Damian Harris as well over Booker. Ayuk or, yeah, all right. Donald People Jones already played. And, unfortunately, uh, DPJ got hurt. I picked him up, and I was excited to pick him up for free. But then, of course, he gets hurt before he could do anything. So, that sucks. Um, pick three, Lockett, Pittman, or OBJ. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Lockett, Pittman, OBJ, Melvin Gordon, Myers, Rondo Moore. So, obviously, Melvin's already played. Well, Melvin's also droppable at this point. Melvin Gordon? Yeah. He had a touchdown. Well, he had a good game last night. Yeah, of course he did. But the first one all year, probably. I mean, <laughs> he's, he's not droppable, though. <laughs> he is, though. I dropped him mildly. Melvin Gordon? Yeah. You're crazy. He's been consistent as hell. Right, but I'm deep okay. when it comes to running back position. So you I'm should like, have traded him. My God. It, it's, it was, you know, it's late. Game start in two days. And it's a public league, so you never know when the hell they're going to get back to you. Oh, okay. oh, you had to pick someone else up. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So pick three: Lockett, Pittman, OBJ, Myers, or Rondale Moore. Okay. So I'm gonna say OBJ has already played. Obviously, um, I'm not starting. Okay. I'm going Myers, Lockett, Pittman. That's what I would have said, even if all those guys hadn't played yet. I'm going Myers, Pittman, Lockett. That's what I said too. You I know, said but it in different order. All well, right. because I'm ranking them. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Mike Davis or Elijah Mitchell? That's an interesting question. Who are you rolling with? Mikey, D- Mike Davis or Elijah Mitchell? They're both <laughs> a coin flip. So yeah, I think Mike Davis is more stable floor, mm-hmm. and I think Mitchell probably has a higher ceiling. So yeah, I mean he could this week at least show out on Sunday night. Bro, football. I just picked up Trey Sermon for free in our league. Just I saw that he was released. I, I was and I. I Allowed myself. I said, I don't think anybody's going to pick him up. I'm going to wait till the Thursday night games happen. If Demetrius Felton or DPJ go off, then I'll know which one, whichever one doesn't. I'll drop them and pick up Sermon. Right. My plan worked to perfection. Good for you. All right. Um, so, yeah, Mike Davis, if you want floor, Elijah Mitchell, if you want ceiling. 
Jacoby Myers or Mike Davis? Jacoby for me. Yeah. You agree? Easy matchup. Yeah. He's going to eat. <clears throat> yep. Um, Devont, uh, no, he's already played. Sorry. Start two in full PPR. Tyler Lockett, Jacoby Myers, Devontae Smith. So the question is, we're starting Devontae. So the question is, Lockett or Jacoby Myers? Jacoby Myers. You can't trust Lockett with Geno Smith in and there, he's can you? a very difficult matchup against the Saints. I agree. Yeah. I agree. Um, you know, I would still you, you have say, They're both great players, but at the end of the day, Russell Wilson's out, and it's, I don't it's, I think that it's not going to get Metcalf, any easier for them. DK Metcalf is safe in terms of his value, but Tyler Lockett, because Lockett, you have to be more accurate going right. to Lockett, you know, and that's something that Russell Wilson was just so amazing at. Obviously, you know, Smith is, is amazing. Uh, Not yeah. was, but. Okay, so we agree. And this guy just says Tyler Lockett. No other, you know, just. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. He's like, I'm sure. starting him. Yeah, yeah okay. Um, okay, okay. Let's see. So this guy asked Jarvis Landry or Renfro. Sorry, I would have said Renfro, though, because I, I, I wouldn't have trusted Jarvis to be fully healthy. Damian Harris, Naeem Hines, Freeman, Chris Evans. Or Dallas. Um, so okay, D- it's DJ Dallas. Yeah. Um, pick one. What I'm were they say again? Freeman. Uh, Damian Williams, Naeem Hines, I don't Devonta know. Freeman, Chris Evans. It's a close. DJ Dallas. It's close between Damian Harris and Devontae Freeman. No, no, not not Damian Harris. Damian Williams. Oh yeah. Okay. I would have said Damian Harris. For yeah, I'm sure. going Devontae Freeman. Yeah, I'm going Devontae Freeman too. It's not a great matchup, but. Damian Harris has a horrible. I mean, Damian Latavius Williams. Murray, if he's out, you know, you Devontae Freeman is going to get the work. Yeah, he's going to get twelve, at least twelve touches mm-hmm. or and carries. Yeah, and then and he'll turn it into sixty and a touchdown. That and <laughs> he'll have you know two or three catches out of the backfield. Probably so. I don't know why they're not throwing the ball to Le'Veon Bell more. That's kind of a interesting dynamic. I know Freeman's a good pass catcher for a running back as well, but right. Brandon Cooks versus Arizona, or Damian Harris versus the Jets. Damian Harris. Wow. I almost love Cooks because, first of all, it's a good matchup when you look at just Mm personnel-wise. Second of all, they're going to get slaughtered, most likely, so they'll be throwing a lot. I'm going to say, oh, man, if it's PPR, I'm definitely saying Cooks. Standard, I would say Harris. That's what I'll give you. And then also, if you want a higher floor player, go with Harris if you want the boom upside because Cooks in a complete – dismantling could still have you know 10 for 112 and right. you know whatever he could have a big game as well so I, w- I would say if you need if you want to bank on it depends on the construction of your roster if you want to bank on uh, floor go with Harris ceiling go with Cooks uh, Cordero Patterson or Chuba Hubbard and PPR you are not benching Cordero Patterson no definitely not for Chuba Hubbard yeah you that settled that yeah uh, Chiefs D or Ravens D Ravens. Yeah. 100%. 1,000%. Uh, bro, the Ravens defense has been fucking phenomenal. That's going to be a great game this week. With, it is. With I, the Bengals. Do you know, in the last two games, that, or the two games the Bengals played the Ravens last year, they got beat 27-3, to three, and they got beat 38-3, to three, I believe it was. Yeah. So they, right. mes- they mustered all of six points against the Ravens in both games last year. Eight quarters of play. But so who was their quarterback last year? Joe Burrow was for the first one. Oh. The second one was... The other guy. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, I mean, you're not – definitely not starting the Chiefs D over the Ravens D. No, 100%. Um, okay. So, A.B. was also involved in this question, but we'll pretend like, – well, I guess this is no more of a question. I thought it was three guys. Never mind. Uh, Ramondre Stevenson, A.J. Dillon, Michael Carter choose two. That's very easy, brother. A.J. Dillon, Michael Carter. Yep. I still think Michael Carter is going to have a pretty decent week. It's just if you have a viable option that's relatively equal to him in terms of value then I would go there but yeah Michael Carter greater than Ramondre Stevenson in my opinion so is AJ Dillon AJ Dillon is approaching must start territory as a flex option guy Darnell Mooney Jacoby Myers or Lockett in full PPR he said I never thought Lockett would end up with these names (laughs) me either Ben um Jacoby Myers I'm going Mooney fuck it but I I understand I understand yeah I think he's going to be able to get – he's going to have the favorable matchups unless they do the one thing I don't want them to do, which is double A-Rob. 
and then leave Jamel Dean on Mooney because I feel like Jamel Dean would manhandle Mooney. Jamel Dean's a 4-3 corner that's like 6'1", 200-plus pounds, and he is one of the most physical corners in the NFL. He was bodying the Eagles receivers last week. You know, he was really put like getting hands on them. Well, here it says um, Jacoby Myers scored at least 10 fantasy points. In four of six games, he's also been targeted 52 times this season. The next closest Patriot pass catcher has 30. So, wow. he's getting worse. Yeah, I mean, if you okay, I'll say this: if you want to just talk about floor, if you if your roster is constructed in such a way where you're more dependent on floor, go with Jacoby. But if you want to boom upside, like big time 25 point game possibility with a lower floor, if you're willing to take that kind of a calculated risk. Then go with Mooney. That's that's what I'll say. Because I do like Jacoby's floor, especially in that matchup. Um, Michael Carter, Devontae Booker. Book. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I agree. They, uh, just Michael I'm Carter hasn't go Carter. got his footing yet in the NFL. Dude, he's playing well lately. Well, okay, well, he's starting to get it. But at this point in fantasy, he's not startable. Are you out of your mind? Go look, look at his numbers real quick. Look what he's done in fantasy. Look what he's done in fantasy. I have Michael him Carter? Team. Absolutely. 14 last week, 13 the week before. He's been he's been performing. Um, anyways, moving on. But I still think Booker's a better start this week just because I'm a little volume. worried about yeah, the volume. It could get it could get limited for Carter. Um, but I, I do like him. I just like Booker a tad bit more this week. Okay, Pittman, Callaway, Ruggs, Renfro, and that's it, because OBJ's already played. Uh Pittman, Callaway, Ruggs, Renfro. Choose one. Pittman. I agree. Yeah. James Conner. Oh, sorry. Never mind. Sorry, Tyler. I missed you, bro. It was James Conner or Javante Williams. I would have said Javante, by the way. And didn't you just offer me? He tried to get Javante for me for cheap. He tried to buy low in our league and uh, and buy Javante low. How's 17.2 points uh, for Javante feel? All right. Devontae Smith or T. Higgins? Devontae yes. Smith. Uh, I knew you were going to immediately say Devontae. Uh, Lockett or Myers? Again, all right. Myers. Let's, yes, Myers is the answer there. Pick two, Renfro, Jacoby Myers, Tim Patrick, and Patrick's already played, so it's either Renfro or Jacoby, and the answer is? Renfro and Jacoby. No, no, either Renfro or Jacoby. Oh, Jacoby. oh no, you're right, you're right. He said pick two, Sorry, right? Yeah. yeah. I did I did say pick two, and he said pick two. All right, um, Sterling Shepard or Kyle Pitts? I'm going to say Shepard. I'm going to go Kyle. Wow. I'm just, you know, you he's going to build off last their Two last game. Ago, yeah. And, um, you know, the kid obviously has talent. Oh, yeah. Number four um, pick in the draft type of talent. And after last week, they're probably, or two weeks ago, they're probably like, yeah, we probably need to get this guy more involved. So I think they worked on that during the bye week. Um, he's a sneaky little play. I mean, obviously, if you drafted him, you're starting him. Yeah, you draft him in the fourth round. If you draft him, maybe the fifth. If you if you're if, if he's a sit start question, I'm assuming you have another tight end that you're playing, and it's just like your flex. You want to run yeah. two tight end. He's probably got like Travis Kelsey, is the other guy, which is enough. Man, you highly invested in the tight end position in the first probably four rounds, maybe first five rounds. Yeah. You got two. I got now, Hunter Henry in like the thirteenth round. Yeah, and he's a viable starter. Yeah, I got Hunter Henry in that range as well. And in another league, I picked him up off waivers yeah. because somebody dropped I him mean, for like a week. If you if you drafted George Kittle, man, that's it's hurting know. right now. Two years in a row. Yep, two years in a row. Great talent, but it's you know, best ability is availability, and he ain't available. Um, so this Javante Williams was also involved in this question, but no longer, obviously. So it's either Michael Carter or Antonio Gibson, and we're definitely going Antonio Gibson. Absolutely. All right. Um, Shepard Mooney, Steve. It says D Stevenson. Is there another Stevenson? I'm not thinking. I think he just meant Ramondre, Ramondre. Stevenson. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, or McKissick. So Shepard, Mooney, Stevenson, or McKissick. I'm going Wait, Mooney. Just pick one. Yeah. Yeah. I like Mooney. Christian Kirk or Alex Collins. Christian Kirk is Alex Collins even playing? We don't know. That's the issue there. That's. I think that's probably the reason why he's asking. Mm-hmm. You know. I mean, obviously. He's going to know by 12 o'clock tomorrow, so. Um, Not tomorrow. Or, excuse me, on yeah. Sunday. You got me really excited for a second. I, was I like, know. Oh, shit. I got myself really excited. <laughs> okay. Yeah, man. I mean, I would just wait to the last second. If Collins looks like he's going to play for sure, yeah. then no. go with him. But 
I don't know. It's There's no practice reports out yet. Um, he didn't practice yesterday, so we don't know about today. So if he's a DNP today, he ain't playing. Yeah, I agree. Okay, Jefferson. I'm. Not, is does he mean Justin? Because he ain't benching Justin. Jefferson. Can you think of another Jefferson? Van. Oh, maybe so. Jefferson and Pat. Oh, okay. Never mind. Jefferson and Patterson. So Justin Jefferson and Cordero Patterson. For Diggs and Gaskin, who wins? Jefferson and Cordero Patterson for Diggs they win. and Miles Gaskin. Well, who's they? Cordero. Oh, yeah, Cordero and Justin Jefferson. Yeah, that's definitely the better package. Yeah, it's 100%. All right. Callaway or Higgins in full PPR? Coin flip, honestly. Um, I think it's undeniably Higgins. Like, I think Higgins yeah. is going to be... Yeah, uh, but I mean, I mean H- Higgins is going to have a bounce back week this week. I promise. But promise. Callaway could build on his week two weeks ago, and have another. No, he could. He he has a good matchup too, but Higgins to me is a. It, it's but over under ten bad. points for Callaway this week. Mm. He could either have seventeen or two. Like I could over you know, under. If I have to make a choice, there yeah. I'd say over. My point exactly. He has. That's his floor. Ten point. His floor's nothing. I his know. floor's a donut. But it could potentially, depending on the start and him building off. Like that's another thing that could have worked on. That's true. In the bye week it, he, is he getting him more, more involved because yeah. obviously we saw what he did in the preseason. He's a viable player. He's good. Runs great he's routes. He's their best player. Yeah, at this point, yeah, I don't. In terms of receiver, Michael Thomas. I don't know when he's coming back. But yeah, yeah. He's Drew okay. Brees made him who he is. <laughs> okay, Elijah Mitchell, Mike Davis, Chuba, and Daryl Williams pick three. Chuba, Daryl Henderson. Daryl Williams. Oh, Daryl Williams playing yeah, him. Darryl, I agree, Daryl Williams. Mm-hmm. And who are the other two? Elijah Mitchell and Mike Davis. And Dar- Coin uh, flip. Um, so it's are you saying Chuba and Daryl? Mm-hmm, for sure. And then... And Mike Mitchell. Davis has a higher floor. Mitchell has a higher ceiling. Yeah. So it's kind of whatever you need in that regard, I think, at that point. Yeah, I'm I would probably Mitchell. go Mike Davis just because I think that I just give me the guaranteed 10 points. Just with, you know? Yeah, but with Cordero, it's like I feel like he's just getting more and more work every right. week. But they're they're committed to the run with Arthur um, Smith. Is it Arthur Smith? Yeah, Arthur Smith. I was going to say Arthur Brown for some reason. Arthur Smith is just that both of those guys are eaten, you right. know. But Cordero's really eaten because Cordero has a great role he's like half receiver half running back so it's perfect okay Devontae Smith Miles Sanders or Bateman Devontae Smith I agree AJ Green versus AJ Dillon battle of the AJs Dan I am I am Dan (laughs) a AJ Green I'm gonna say AJ Dillon I think that the Washington football team is reeling and I just think that they're going to respect that pass rush to the point where they're going to make sure that they run the ball effectively and have a quick game. I think both of those things benefit A.J. Dillon. I'm going with A.J. Zach Ertz or Hunter Henry? Hunter Henry. Yes. 100%. <laughs> I agree. He's obviously been doing well the last few weeks coming along. Like we said earlier, with Zach Ertz, new offense, a new team. It's going to take some time to get acclimated. Yeah. Um, obviously, unless they just, you know, get a first and goal from the five and run a simple drag route, you know, that's right. what you're kind of banking on. He's touchdown dependent this week. Yeah. McKissick or Renfro, uh, full PPR flex option. McKissick? Yep. Yeah. Um, I, I just think that McKissick is going to, ca- they're going to be probably playing from behind. Mm-hmm. That's going to be McKissick catching seven, eight passes in the game or getting at least targeted that many times. Right. Pick two. Rashad Bateman, Brandon Ayuk, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Dante Pettis, pending injuries, he says. Well, I'm going to say, I just can we start? What's Dante Pettis done lately? Has he done anything? Like, I mean, I understand all the injuries there. He's like the number two or three receiver. I get it. But I would say Bateman and St. Brown. Dante Pettis, first game of the season last week. 11 targets. Wow, that's right. I forgot about that. 5 for 48. Yeah, I don't think that's going to lend to being a lot more usage. You know, he yeah, caught less than 50% of his Sterling targets. Sterling Shepard's in this week, right? Yeah. yeah. Gall- um, is Galloway playing or is he still out? He's questionable. I don't know. Of course he is. I think he's probably going to be out one more Always week. Always questionable. I the guy, 
I wasted a third round draft pick on him last year. Third? Oh, last year. Yeah. Gibson or Edmonds? Gibson. Gibson. Boyd or Julio? PPR. Julio. Julio. Yeah. Callaway versus Seattle or Corey Davis versus the Patriots? Callaway. Yes. Yes. Yeah. That was like waiting for you to immediately. Yeah. My my bad. I uh, was I was looking up stats over here. Yes. Hundred yeah. percent Callaway. Rugs or Crowder and PPR. Rugs. I like his. I agree. I like his ceiling. I think that against that Philly secondary, that Philly secondary is built to stop like the bigger. He's another guy. Physical receivers, not the Henry Ruggs of the world. Yeah, he's like last week, forty-eight yard bomb. You know, that's yeah. just anytime like, he can do that, and he really can do it. And they're anytime. and they're force they're they're you know forcing that more this season than they ever have. With well, Ruggs. because they're paying more attention to Waller, who typically runs the shorter or intermediate. So right. Ruggs is just. Ching. Yeah, just taking off. And if he's single covered, he's going to run past you. Yeah, hundred percent. And if and he if he's past you by that five yard hash, yes, you're fucked. You're, done. you're fucked. Yeah. No makeup speed is going to catch Henry Ruggs. Right. <laughs> okay. Darnell Mooney, Sterling Shepard, Hunter Renfro, T. Higgins, pick two. I'm going to say. Oh man, that's hard. I'm going to say T. Higgins and Darnell Mooney, and I know Shepard is probably the right answer there, but I'm I'm going T. Higgins and Mooney. Yeah, I'd probably go Mooney and Shepard. I think Shepard's going to eat the I feel you. Uh Robinson, which I don't know if he means Allen. I'm assuming he means James. Well, James is a must start. But anyways, pick three. Robinson, Moore, Ridley, Hollywood. If it's Allen, I'm Ridley picking... Ridley, Hollywood. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're saying... That's who I'm picking. Ridley, it says pick three. Oh. Ridley, Plays Hollywood. I agree, I agree. Mm-hmm. DJ Moore or Allen. DJ Moore. Yes, and then he's DJ got, Moore, James got, would be he's James. He's got more upside. I mean, obviously, Allen Robinson is a stud, but Bucks. He's likely to get Jamel Dean. Yes. Damien, right. Damien Harris, Latavius Murray, Chubb is out, so I need one of them. Okay, Damien Harris is the answer sure. there, and it's really by default. How many um, more we got? We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. I don't know, a lot, like 15. <laughs> we'll well, go, we'll, let's go a little faster. Well, we'll just try to... Maybe not answer all of them, but get most of them. No, we'll just go fast. Let's just rapid fire. Ready? Go. I can only start two between Higgins, Devontae Smith, Jacoby Myers. Devontae Smith, Jacoby Myers. I agree. Booker or Carter Jr.? Booker. Booker. Um, McKissick or Renfro? Oh, we already did that one. Okay, so maybe I screenshotted that twice. Um, Okay, never mind. We don't have as many as I thought because I screenshotted a couple of these twice. Okay. You know what? We're done. <laughs> Sorry. Perfect. I, yeah, I had some a few that were screenshotted twice. So yeah, um, and then I like what you're saying about Matt Ryan being the must start. Of the week. It, he's a must start. DFS. I don't know what his price is, but I'm assuming it's not like that much in comparison to where he'll finish. I think he'll be a top five quarterback this week. Yeah, hundred percent. He's he's one hundred percent start of the week. Coming off by daring by apocalypse. A lot of buy, <laughs> a lot of buys this week. I mean, yeah. he's. Like I said, must start. A uh, couple other stardoms this week. If you have a Herbert or Allen, Derek Carr is a sneaky start um, against Philly. Uh, yeah. Tua is actually a sneaky start. Ryan Tannehill, I think they're going to be Trevor coming. Trevor Lawrence. Yeah. Oh, wait, they're on by. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, well, Trevor Lawrence next week for sure. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Another sneaky play is Ryan Tannehill against Casey. Obviously, they're going to be coming from behind. Uh, what about... Um, I think he has over 20 fantasy points. What do you think about Daniel Jones? Hate him. Against the Panthers? Yeah. Even though Kirk Cousins went 370 and three scores last week? Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, what about Mac Jones against the Jets? I like it. I mean, yeah. if he, he hasn't... If you're desperate... Right. I don't see... He hasn't broke over 20 fantasy points all year, I don't believe. So. In our league, he did it once, and he scored 19 last week. Yeah, and we give... when we. We give up a lot because we're twenty point or twenty yards for every point. A lot oh, okay. of them are twenty five, so that kind of is telling in itself. But and guys, if you have Jonathan Taylor, he's a must start and do not trade him. Yeah, under had, any circumstances. He had twenty point nine against Tampa. Yeah, do not trade Jonathan Taylor under any circumstances. Right. All right, let's get out of here. All right, guys. Well, um, for kickoff Sunday, obviously get your sit start questions in. Be sure to like and comment. Um. Oh yes, please like and comment. We need that. For yeah, the ring algorithm. the bell. I mean, all that shit. it all helps at the end of the day. Um, like I said, DMs, comments, 
Get your sit start questions in for Sunday at noon here at Central Time, and uh, we'll get you rolling for the weekend. All right, guys. Peace. We'll catch you in the next one. Later.